Hi guys, my name's Tom and this is episode 4 of Watercolour Bites. They're designed to be easily digestible, packed full of information to help you progress your watercolour painting and it should help with other mediums too. I definitely recommend hopping back and checking out the previous episodes. There's been quite a lot of theory so far but it's kind of laying the foundation for future videos where we're going to look more at practical application and a lot more painting so kind of stick with me on this. As always you can hop over to my Patreon channel where there's much more in-depth tutorials Let's roll the credits and get into it. Okay, so we've already seen in the last video the benefit of using very simple tones to not only analyse our subject but also in practical application in an artwork. We saw that using only two tones, black for shadow, white for light, we could create a very readable image and even create a very powerful and impactive piece of art. However, if we want to start creating artworks with more form or 3D-ness and a sense of space and depth and just general more subtlety, we do need to start looking at using more tones in the analysis, interpretation and application. So in order to keep it simple and slowly build up to more tones, let's just introduce one extra tone which we will call a generic mid-tone. This is neither dark nor light, it's somewhere in the middle which will be represented by grey. We will soon be going deeper into different values, what they are and why they occur. But as I keep saying, just for now, we're gonna keep it simple as a way of conceptualizing what we're looking at. So the first thing to note is that this new value looks like a shadow or a darker tone in the light white area. But put this exact same tone value in the currently black shadow area and it's lighter than its surroundings. Uh, yeah, that's pretty obvious, you might be thinking, but what this is a great example of is tone being relative to what's around it. Even the seemingly absolute tonal values of black and white can only appear to be dark or light if they have other values around them to relate to. Once we get into the mid-tones, this becomes even more apparent. And there are all sorts of wonderful optical illusions that revolve around this. So this phenomena, uh, if that's the right word, is known as simultaneous contrast and it applies to colour too. We'll get to that, but basically it's that our perception of a tonal value, in this case, is completely dependent on what other tonal values are around it. So there's loads of other examples on the net if you want to check them out and we'll take a closer look at those at some point. But the useful bottom line is that if you take a colour and put it in one area, it may read as a darker tone. Take that exact same colour and put it in a different darker area and it will read as a lighter tone. And as usual, simply being aware of this and starting to notice it not only in your subject but also in your own work will do only good for your painting. And it's another great tool in learning to use tone to simplify our subject. For example, let's bring up the same painting again, but we'll take this purpley magenta colour from the lit ear on the right hand side, where it appears as a strong shadow tone. And then let's take the same red from the ear in shadow. This is still a shadow value, but it's appearing as reflected or bounced light within the shadow area. And that's because it's surrounded by much darker tones. Now, if we turn this to grayscale, we can see that these two colors are exactly the same tonal values. And I must have been having a particularly good day when I painted this. But again, we can see that despite using two very different colors and jumping from the light to the shadow, we haven't actually jumped around with lots of different tonal values. They are the same value and therefore we have simplified the image from a tonal point of view. Now, we don't need to make these values exactly the same and we're gonna take a closer look at grouping tonal values together in a couple of videos time. Right, that was quite the detour. Let's get back to introducing a third tone and we're back to the ball. Yes, very good. The biggest decision here is how dark or light, i.e. what tonal value to make this mid-tone grey. 
In an actual painting, the contrast between the dark, the lights and the mid-tone can have a big effect on the overall feel of a painting. Top marks if you remember me saying in episode 2 that colour is how you feel a subject, but that tone can also change the way that a subject feels. So here you can see that the other choice for this example is how far to take that mid-tone grey into the white or the light area of the board. And a small point, whichever of the mid-tones that we choose, it still feels like shadow versus the white. So this ball isn't actually that realistic, as in reality the light does far more interesting things than this, but again we are just conceptualising the basic tonal values here, there's lots more on realism to come. Also I purposely soften the edge between the black and the grey on the top ball, but of course this is adding actually a fourth tone, and that's not yet. So although these are quite crude examples and not that realistic, like the two-tone images, we still have a strong visual design, we still have a strong feeling of light, but we also have a stronger feeling of form, more of a sense of space and depth, and a little more subtlety. And also it's really fun when we start introducing more tones, although it is more places to fuss and more places to lose simplicity. So let's wrap this video up with a little more practical application in the form of some actual painting. So I'm going to take the two images from the last episode and I'm going to give them a go this time with three tones instead of two. So kicking off with the coastal scene from the last video and let's go again this time with the three tones. So in a proper painting we might be a bit more fluid here with the way that the tones interact but this time I'm just going to paint the mid-tone grey leaving some of the white of the paper, we're going to let it dry and then basically do as I did with the above image on top. So in hindsight I could have definitely gone darker with this mid-tone but ultimately it's personal preference and when prepping for a real painting I definitely try a few different options. What I will say is that a darker mid-tone in this case would have further accentuated the light not only within the buildings but also in some ways more importantly accentuated the light on the ground in front of the buildings and I think this would have made more of the light and in my opinion would have made a strong stronger design and a stronger composition. But overall you can see that with just one extra tone we have a little more sense of depth and space and a touch more subtlety. So moving on to the boats which I think had a nice strong design with just the two tones. I am going to purposely go darker with the mid-tone grey based on what we've just seen on the coastal scene and let's see what we get. So initially I'm almost just mapping out the shadows again but just using the mid-tone. And not forgetting to leave lots of lovely whites of the page as the lights and the highlights. And then as I add the dark I really want to try and keep that strong pattern of light and shadow that I had in the two-tone one. But what we see is that this mid-tone really gives that added sense of form or 3D-ness to things. It definitely gives an added sense of um, subtlety and it definitely gives a better sense of depth and space. Yet we still have that strong sense of light and shadow that I was so determined to catch that I've taken from the two-tone one. I just want to quickly round this one up by analysing the boats more closely for a moment. The first point is that this area here doesn't quite work, it needs resolving. It's not a major deal, but if I was prepping for a larger painting, this is what these little value studies can be really great for. That is highlighting potential problems that need to be solved. And yes, a lot of painting is actually problem solving. And secondly, check out the way that this single mid-tone that we've used and how it changes its job in different areas, which is exactly what we looked at earlier in the video. Okay, so yes, I've kind of drifted into using four tones in the odd place just due to the fluid nature of watercolour, but it's this bit here that is most interesting to me. Look how this added third tone, the mid-tone grey, when in this shadow area here, it acts as a lighter value, representing the white of the boat, but in shadow, Yet we take that exact same value and we put it on the light side of the boat and it represents the much darker segments of the boat when they're hit by direct light. 
It's only a small thing, but it is a really important one. And it shows not only the power of tonal values in creating an image, but also how well they can be used to simplify our subject whilst we're painting. Which, for us, makes many things a lot easier, and it certainly makes for a better painting. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If so, please do feel free to share it with others you think might. And until next time, happy creating, happy living, and I shall see you soon.